Before going into the main topic, let's understand what is HTTP protocol and AJAX polling. In case of HTTP protocol, you have a client. Client will construct the request and it turns sense to the server. The server will read the request and it constructs the response and it sends back to the client. So that is how the HTTP protocol works. Even the server sends an empty response, the client will be able to read that. Let's see some of the examples. So let's say you go into the browser, you type google.com and hit enter. The protocol working over here is HTTP protocol. Similarly, you go into the Google, you do some search and you get a lot of results and you click one of the search result. The protocol working over there is also a HTTP protocol. So in case of Ajax polling, there is a client. Client will send the request to the server. The server will read the request and it will send the response back to the client. In case of Ajax polling, there is a key difference. That is a time factor. So based on your time configurations in the UI or in the JavaScript, the again the request will go back to the server and the server will construct the response and it will send back to the client. So this process keeps on continuing in case of Ajax polling. So the best example for Ajax polling is a weather update. So you can configure a JavaScript to do Ajax polling and based on the frequent updates, you can get the weather update from the server. In case of HTTPS long polling, you have a client. The client will open a connection and it will construct all the request information and it will pass on that information to the server. As soon as the server receives the request information, it will try to see if there is a response information available. If the response information is not available, it will not send empty data. So it might wait for some time to figure out the response data. So let's say it figured out the response data. Now it will construct the response information and it will start sending back to the client. So this process will keep on continuing by opening the connection multiple times based on the need. So that is how HTTPS long polling works. In summary, for HTTPS long polling, you have to keep three things in your mind. Number one, the response will not be an empty. The number two, the server will wait as long as it is going to get the response data. Number three, if there is a timeout, it has to open the connection again and do the process again and again repetitively. Okay. In case of WebSocket, there is a client. The client will open a connection with the server. As soon as the connection is made, there is a handshaking mechanism which happens between the client and server. So that means a client can send the data to the server and the server can send the data to the client. So the transmission between the client and server is a bidirectional. The classic example of WebSocket is a chat application or something similar to the WhatsApp. So I already discussed about WhatsApp in another system design video and I will strongly recommend you to watch that and provide your feedback. Let's see how the server side event works. You have a client. The client will have a persistent connection with the server. As soon as server receives the data from different locations, it will figure out the response and will start sending back to the client. Now, if you see into this picture, there is one way connection between the client and server and all the responses are coming back from the server to client based on the availability of the data from the server. So that is how server side event works. Some of the examples which uses the server side events are stock chart, analytical report, and we also have a real time data in the loop. So let's take a case where you have a UI and UI wants to plot the graph based on the server side information. In that case, you can have a server side events. That's it I have. Thanks for watching.